Hey guys, it's Charlie here for Rocky Mountain Honda and Yamaha. Uh, we're down here at the shop today looking at a couple models that we have here in the shop. Uh, exciting new bike for this year is the 2021 CRF 450R. A uh, ton of big changes this year that we're going to go through a little bit of that and uh, a couple riding impressions. We've had one out at the track uh, within the last couple weeks here and just wanted to compare it to the 2020 model and let you guys know some of the differences between the two bikes. So starting off with the 2020 model, this is the bike I personally rode and raced all year. Um, overall, I really like this bike. It was a uh, pleasure to ride all year. Um, I would describe this bike as a quick handling bike. It's very precise steering. Um, it can get a little bit busy on some high speed stuff. Overall, great cornering capabilities. It really likes to fall and follow, follow through the corners nicely. Um, the only modification that I ended up doing to this bike was to get the suspension set up for myself. So heavier springs and a revalve on the suspension just to have it set up for my personal use. But other than that, stock exhaust, stock brakes, all that stuff remained right as it comes off the showroom floor. Um, the motor on this bike is, the only word to describe it is it's a beast. It's got a ton of power. It picks up really strong off the bottom end, hard hitting. It's great when you're riding any kind of terrain that is soft, deep, great traction. Maybe not the easiest bike to ride when things get hard pack and slippery at the end of the day. Um, moving on to the 2021, we'll go through a little bit of the technical changes and stuff that Honda did and then uh, go through some riding impressions after that. So as you can see, looking at the bike side by side, it's a completely different bike this year. They redesigned the frame, the swing arm, all the chassis components and the goal for that was to give it a bit of a softer, more compliant feel out on the track. Um, new for this year as well is a hydraulic clutch um, a little bit easier pull on the finger and stuff like that so that's a very nice add-on this year first uh, first thing for honda for the motocross bikes um, some of the changes to the engine they change the angle of the fuel injection nozzle and provides a finer mist of fuel into the engine um, first for any motocross bike is an oval shaped cylinder head port and that just changes the way that the exhaust gases flow out of the engine and there's a lot of changes you can do by manipulating that oval to round exhaust shape um, to give you a different power char characteristic. Uh, the all new body work, as you can see the bike is completely different plastic, nothing switches over from the 2020 to the 21 model. Uh, much slimmer, the bike in total is 70 millimeters slimmer, so a big difference over the 2020 model. Um, the rider triangle, so the seat to foot pegs and handlebar distance, that remains the same between the two bikes. And I think that's a really good thing that Honda did because sitting on any of the Honda off-road bikes, naturally it feels like the bars are in the correct position, the shifter, the brake are all where you want them to be. It's a very comfortable bike ergonomically. So that remains the same between the two bikes. Really, this is kind of just scratching the surface on all the technical changes between the two bikes. There is a huge write-up on Honda's website if you are interested in reading into that further. But uh, I believe the only part numbers that cross over are the front wheel and the front brake. Everything else is completely new for the bike. So, um, Moving on next here, uh, we'll go through riding the bikes. This is the interesting stuff that everybody really likes to know about. Um, we were lucky to have some good weather here in the fall, early November in Calgary that we got the bike out and uh, got about 10 hours on the bike within four days. So had a variety of riders, vet, pro, intermediate, older guys, younger guys, try the bike. So get some general impressions from a couple different people. Uh, Overall, the 2021 bike is much easier to ride. Like I said, the 2020 really hit hard and came on strong. It was an aggressive power. Great for your racer type rider, not so good for your kind of leisure guy. Um, the 21 has just as much, it actually puts out more total horsepower than the 2020 model, but just the way it produces power, it's a much more mild mannered, smoother delivery, very linear power. So it's, uh, very, it's the first thing you notice is getting onto the track, it's just much smoother pickup and easier to, if you want to say follow a long rut that you are steady throttle throughout the whole turn. The 2020, it was very sharp off idle. It would pick up very quickly and it was hard to maintain a smooth line through the corner. The 21 comes on much softer and it's a lot easier to ride. Um, still a very powerful bike. It'll pull through or up anything. It'll jump anything you ever want with ease. Um, I actually prefer the 2020 power band in those really soft, deep conditions when you really want the bike to pick up and pull out of the corner. The 2021 is much easier to ride in everything else. So snow bikes or sand riding, stuff like that. The 2020 is still a great bike for that kind of condition. Um, 
to body work, you tell right away as well with the, how narrow the bike is and the frame, the body work, the radiator shrouds. What that does is it makes it really easy to lean the bike over in a corner and get your leg up high enough out of the way so you don't snag it in the rut. Um, I also really liked all the body work was very seamless and smooth. Uh, my pants, my knee braces, all that kind of stuff, my boots. I wasn't catching anything on the plastic, so that was really nice. Um, the new chassis, you definitely notice it does have a softer feel. It, uh, the stock suspension, me being uh, 190 pounds, six foot two, I'm too big for these bikes stock, and that goes with any bike on a production side of things. So for me, I'm always gonna get my suspension done anyways, so right off the bat, I could tell both bikes are too soft for me in stock condition. That being said, you can feel the chassis changes with the 21. It rides a lot smoother and it's a lot more compliant over those square edge, if you think about like a, a, the shape of a staircase, a really sharp square bump. The 2021 chassis does absorb that a little bit nicer. Um, so that's a definitely a big bonus depending on what kind of conditions you ride. The stability on the 2021 I found was a little bit better as well. We have some high speed straightaway sections uh, at the track that we were riding the bike. And the 2021, if you're not careful, this bike is very sensitive to uh, sag adjustments and fork height in the triple clamp, stuff like that. So if you're off on your setup slightly, the bike can feel a little bit twitchy at high speed. Where the 2021, I rode the bike without setting the sag, then we set the sag and it remained calm no matter what the setup was. The ch new chassis is a little bit more stable at high speed, so I really enjoyed that part of it as well. Um, the hydraulic clutch has a really nice feel. I've ridden a couple other bikes that have hydraulic clutches and they have a very on-off engagement point, which is difficult for uh, if you're practicing starts or if you're trying to just slip and meter the power out of a corner. This hydraulic clutch has a really smooth engagement point. It has a nice halfway kind of feel, similar to a cable clutch. So it has the benefits of the feel of a cable clutch, but it doesn't have the fade of a cable clutch. After a long moto, the 2020 model, you could have, find yourself having to adjust the cable tension on the clutch perch wheel, where the 2020 model, or 2021 model, I'm sorry, has the hydraulic clutch that self adjusts and all that kind of stuff. So that was a real big bonus as well. Much lighter pull on your hands so you won't get arm pump after a long ride and stuff like that. So overall, really nice. Um, both bikes come with three different power maps, three different traction control maps, and three different start mode maps. And it's amazing how adjustable these bikes are. When you put the bike in the mellow setting and then compare it to in the full power setting, it's a much more aggressive power. So even without buying any kind of aftermarket accessories or anything like that, both bikes are very tunable, which is super cool. Um, overall, the 2021, it feels lighter, slimmer, and it's a little bit easier to ride than the 2020 model. That being said, the 2020 model is still super good. I raced this bike all year. I had no complaints with it. It's a great bike as well. Um, the cool thing that Honda is doing this year is they're re releasing another run of the 2020 model at a thousand dollar discount. So if you're looking just for a brand new bike, comes with all the like everything that you get with a brand new bike at a discount. These bikes are very, very close. There are subtle differences between all the bikes nowadays. So I'm not trying to sell the 2021 as far and above better than the 2020, but the change that Honda did make this year made for a, a, a nicer ride. So up to you to pick whichever one you want both available down here at Rocky Mountain Honda. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us today and we'll see you out of the track.